Hey guys and welcome to today's painting video. In this video I wanted to discuss how you can create a beautiful background for your art regardless of the medium. While I talk about this topic I will also share with you the creative process I went through to complete my most recent commissioned oil painting which is titled I move the stars for no one. The piece was inspired by the masquerade scene featured in the fantasy movie The Labyrinth. A limited edition of 25 fine art prints of this painting is now available in my online shop. You can find the link to my shop in the description of this video. I will talk more about the creation process of the painting in the second part of the video. But first, let's start with the topic of the discussion. We are quick before we begin. If time-lapse videos like this one are too fast for you and you would like to see me painting in real time or you want to learn more about my oil painting technique and see how I blend and mix skin tones, then support me on Patreon. I have a plethora of painting tutorials, both for watercolors and oils, immediately available for you in which I teach my various techniques in real time and for no more than five dollars per month you get access to all of them and many more useful and fun rewards. When I started learning how to paint I never knew how to fill in the giant empty background spaces that existed around my figures on canvas and paper and I hated the thought of facing the daunting task. I didn't have any ideas and possessed no patience whatsoever for painting or drawing in backgrounds. Over the years this problem slowly faded away and I pretty much forgot about my early struggles. Thankfully, without even noticing that I had navigated through this challenge, I adapted my technique enough to solve the problem. I only started to remember how much I struggled with this aspect of the painting process after I read some of your comments. It seemed like the right time to make a video discussing this topic. If you find yourself in the same position I was in and you don't know what to do to fill in the background of your artwork, let me help you. I will share some helpful tips. Tip number one. When in doubt, add no background at all. I know this sounds odd, but let me explain. If you want to start right off the bat without spending much time planning your composition, focus instead on thinking about what part of the artwork you want to highlight and feature as your focal point. Let's say you wanted to create a portrait or a character drawing, then that character is probably the focal point and you don't necessarily need an elaborate background surrounding them. Even if you think that your piece of art might look a bit bland or uninteresting without a background, I would still advise against painting a detailed background behind your figure without first planning your composition. There are several reasons why it is not always advised to add a detailed background after you already finished creating a character drawing or painting. Here are a few reasons why this might not work. First, if you decide to paint an environment around your figure, then you would have to make the figure feel like it belongs and blends into the background. Let's say, for example, you want your figure to appear as if they are standing in a forest. Then you would have to consider the light that falls through the trees and leaves, which would require painting detailed patterns of light and shadows onto your character, which would require some prior planning and thought to pull off effectively. Additionally, if a figure is going to seem like it is incorporated into its environment, then you would have to consider whether aspects of the background would extend into the foreground overlapping portions of your figure. In my painting, for example, there are thorn vines in front of the girl which are growing over her dress. The less you plan your piece of art, the less likely your figure will appear as if it is realistically placed into the environment. However, this doesn't mean you can't still add some beautiful finishing touches to accentuate the background of your artwork. You might be able to add washes to the image, for example. Using watercolors, oils or acrylics, you can wash in some abstractions to accompany your artwork, to add a beautiful painterly quality. Sometimes adding this flair takes a bit of courage, but you can either use a lot of wash or just dabble a few drops of color running down your artwork. I like to add these washes while I am still in the middle stages of the painting process, 
so that I can still paint over or draw over them if I think they are too strong. If you don't mind that your artwork takes on a surreal quality, you can place some simplified objects behind your figure. Maybe soft shades of flower blossoms or a drop shadow, indicating that your figure isn't just existing in empty space. Conversely, if you are simply beginning with a sketch, forget everything I just said and feel free to add anything you want to the background. Sketching is meant to be part of the planning process and it serves as a way of forming and hashing out ideas. If your painting is in the planning stage of the creation process, I will share a few ideas that will help you to create beautiful backgrounds later on in the video. If you want to hear them, please listen until the end. Tip number two. Another way to avoid painting a separate background for your image is to draw or paint on a toned surface. The toned surface gives your artwork an already finished look, even if you don't fill in the background and this serves to make your artwork look more illustrative. A great tip for oil and acrylic painters who are looking to create an easy yet pretty background is to add washes and painterly brush strokes onto a metallic toned background. These effects are interesting enough to fill the empty space around your figure beautifully without having to add a background. When creating portraits, I personally solved my background issue by adding floating objects like flowers, leaves, insects and birds in front of and behind my figure. For full figures, I created fantasy landscapes that I planned out meticulously beforehand. Which leads us to the next tip. Tip number three. If you want to have a more complex background, planning is key. As many of you know, when I create more elaborate oil and watercolor paintings, I always create a Photoshop mockup first. While I am constructing a composition, I am also simultaneously deciding on what the background will consist of. To find elements to fill in the background, I search on Google Images for visuals that might inspire me like a beautiful evening sky or clouds. I also refer to landscape photos and I took parts of them behind my subject. Normally a tiny fraction of a landscape is sufficient to make a good background. For example, two mountains framing your portrait and some white clouds in the middle can be enough to allow the portrait to pop out from the background. The amount of content that you include in your background depends on how much your subject is zoomed in as well. If you draw or paint a portrait as a focal point of the image, you might not see much of the background at all and in this case some leaves or flowers might suffice. If you are painting a full figure, however, it is really worth it to spend a lot of time planning the background. For the painting you see in this video, I needed a whole day to finish the composition. The work consisted of stitching together countless individual photographs in Photoshop. A good way to go for building backgrounds is to use closer pictures of plants. A couple of years ago, I took some photos of random rhododendron bushes and oddly enough, when I needed some indistinguishable shapes behind my figure, these bushes seemed perfect. Often small plants with interesting colored leaves that are not too flashy can be very useful as background images if they don't steal attention away from your focal point. I recommend going out into nature and taking some of your own pictures of plants, trees or scenes from different angles. Then later on you can deconstruct them to create your own individualized background. Of course, pictures you find on the internet offer good solutions as well, as long as you only use parts of them when creating compositions. When I create mockups in Photoshop, I would always resize my background pictures so they they are either ridiculously large or interestingly small. Then I play around with the shapes until I find something that fits my subject nicely. Most of the time a flashy or poppy or ornately pretty background don't fit very well together with an intricate figure, because both a detailed background and the model might have mismatched colors that compete for attention. Therefore, working out a well-balanced Photoshop composition or creating a traditional sketch prior to painting allows us to bring all of the elements to create a beautiful artwork in the end. To conclude, I would say the most important thing is to see the figure and the background as parts of the same image. Try to think about what you want to create in the first place. 
If it is a whole scene, then you need to plan a background, sketch out your ideas and incorporate the background elements while considering what effect the lighting of the background and other components might have on your figure or figures. Or if you just want to draw or paint a figure or character, then perhaps including a single colored background pattern or a gradient will be enough. You can also let your sketch or your drawing just resolve by running into the surrounding space through loose strokes or lines. So these are my tips about today's topic of discussion. I hope you found them helpful and I could give you some ideas that can advance your own artwork. Before I end this video though, I would like to tell you more about the creation process and the meaning of this painting, because it became so dear to me while I created it during the last two months. My collector and I are both huge fans of the Labyrinth movie and she wanted me to depict a beautiful girl like Sarah, the protagonist, dressed in a magnificent garment ready to go to the masquerade ball. Her environment is hostile and scary, but she stays brave and courageously faces any dangers that she might encounter. The title I Move the Stars for No One is a line of the David Bowie song Within You that was played during the last scenes of the movie. It took me countless hours to paint her and at some point I even switched from using my video camera to my smartphone in order to record the process directly in time lapse, because I didn't even have enough disk space to store the real time footage. When I created the mock-up I knew it would take me almost forever to paint all the details and I knew it was worth it. Creating the mock-up itself was a challenge already. I wanted the anatomical proportions of the figure to resemble the ball-jointed dolls that I'm so fascinated with. I didn't have a doll at that time, so I took a photo of my own body and changed its proportions with the liquify function in Photoshop until it looked like one of these dolls. Additionally, my collector wanted the model to have a foreign look because she thinks fantasy worlds like the world depicted in the labyrinth are for everyone and I couldn't agree more. Therefore I had to tan my skin color and also replaced my face with a completely new one, consisting of an Asian and a black model. And the mouth actually is from Sarah Connelly herself, the actress from the movie. I pretty much Frankensteined everything until I got this artificial doll-like girl and it was a fascinating experience to create a human form from so many different pieces. I hope I could catch some of the magic that enchants me to this day when I watch The Labyrinth. And that's it for today. I hope you found the video helpful and interesting. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to comment, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Bye bye! Thank you.